I'm on the mid-chapter check for chapter 4. This is page 173 in the Big Go Math book. Follow along. I'm going to set these problems up. These are pretty straightforward. Um, if you were paying attention to the other videos, uh, these should be pretty easy for you. But I will do a couple examples just to jog your memory to remind you. Okay, number one, a blank is a rate that makes a comparison to one unit. Go to page 158 and uh, see which one of these vocabulary words they're talking about when you're comparing to one unit. Okay, number two, two ratios that name the same comparison are, go to page 161, again see what they're talking about, which one of these things they're talking about when they say they're showing two ratios that show the same comparison. Okay, number three, write the ratio of red circles to blue circles. So the, the number of red is going to be first, so that's three, and then two, the number of blue squares is second, one, two, three, four, five, three to five. Okay. <clears throat> Write the ratio in two different ways. So this is one way, eight to two. You can also write it as eight to two using the colon. And you can also write it eight, or excuse me, eight to two, eight to 12. And you can also write it as a fraction. Okay. So these are the three different ways that you write each ratio. So if they use the colon, you're going to write it this way and this way. If they use the fraction, you're going to write it this way and this way, and so on. Okay. <clears throat> uh, number 8 through 11, equivalent ratios. And you need two of them, not just one. So you're going to take the original ratio that they gave you. And you can either multiply or divide. I like to multiply just because when you multiply, you can pick any number you want other than one. When you divide, you have to make sure you use a common factor. So multiplying, uh, if they don't tell you, if they just say, hey, write two equivalent ratios, whatever ratios you want, as long as they're equivalent, I always choose to multiply because I can multiply any number I want as long as it's not one. So I'm going to multiply this by 2 over 2. And remember, whatever you pick, you're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator both by that number. So 2 times 2 is 4. 7 times 2 is 14. There's one equivalent ratio. And then I take that same ratio again. And this time I'm going to choose 3. It's going to be uh, 2 times 3 is 6. 7 times 3 is 21. So 6 over 21, there's my second ratio. It asks for two equivalent ratios. Okay, and you can do the same type of strategy to solve 9, 10, and 11. Okay, 12, 13, 14, and 15, find the unknown value. Um, I'm going to, let's jump to number 14. I'll show you how to do 14, and then you should be able to do the other ones. Okay, so we have this fraction, both numbers, and we have the denominators of both. So I'm going to start there. 16, if I want to go down to 8, I'm going to have to divide. 16 divided by what gives me 8? 16 divided by 2. If I divide the bottom by 2, I have to divide the top by the same number. So 48 divided by 2, half of 48 is going to be 24. So the missing value is 24. All right, so you're going to use a similar strategy. You're going to be either dividing or multiplying by the same number to find uh, the equivalent ratio. And then that will allow you to find the missing value. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.